number 15 asks us to now calculate out our top of descent. And we can calculate out the top of descent very similar to how we calculated out the top of climb. So we're up at 5,500 and we're coming down to land in Columbia. So when we look at the Columbia Airport, it's in blue, so the writing's in blue. And what I'm looking for is the field elevation. So we have Columbia, Charlie Alpha Echo, we have the control tower frequency, the ATIS frequency, and then the field elevation, 236 feet. Most normal traffic patterns are 1,000 feet, and then you just round it. So the traffic pattern here at Columbia should be 1,200 feet. Be sure you always double check with the chart supplement book in case there's a non-standard pattern. So if we're back here at 5,500 feet and we want to descend down to arrive at the pattern at pattern altitude, we want to pre-plan our descent. We want to always descend with power if possible and not descend at idle. If we waited too long to begin our descent in order to arrive at the traffic pattern at the proper time, we would be forced to pull the power back to idle or we may have to do circles to lose our altitude and then descend. So why do we not want to descend with the power at idle? Because in piston airplanes, you can shock cool them. What that means is that you've, you had the engine very warm for cruise, you pull the power back to idle, and you blast a lot of cold air over your cylinders and you can actually crack them. So if we plan our descent with a little bit of power, we can keep the cylinders nice and warm all the way down to your destination. So if the Columbia Airport field elevation is around 200 feet, the pattern altitude should be around 1,200 feet. Just to make the math easier, we'll call it 1,000 feet. So if we're going to descend from 5,500 down to about 1,000, we are going to lose 4,500 feet, which is very similar to how we left Greenville and climbed up to our altitude. So here we are at 5,500, and we are going to descend down to around 1,000 feet. It's actually 1,200, but we'll just call it 1,000 to make the math easy. So again, if we are going to lose 4,500 feet at a descent rate of about 500 feet a minute, it would again take us about nine minutes. We can use that over here. So we have the top of descent to Columbia, then it should take us about nine minutes. Well, how far away will we be if we start our descent nine minutes away. We're going to use our E6B calculator size again. So the descent, we have a choice in our speed. We can descend at a faster airspeed, the same airspeed, or a slower airspeed. Most, most students like to descend around the same speed. They typically will pull the little power back and descend around the same speed. So on our descent, if our speed across the ground is around 120 for nine minutes, how far will we travel? So we go to our formula. It says set the little pointer on our speed, which is 120. And then it says that once we've done that, distance reads on the outer scale and time reads on the inner scale. So what do we know? We know the time, nine minutes. So go find nine minutes and then look above that to read the distance. So it says 18 miles. So we should be about 18 miles away when we begin our descent. So we have time, nine minutes, speed would still be about 120, and distance should be 18. Now, let's look at our chart and see where is 18 miles away. We have our plotter. Make sure you have nautical miles side up. And then you can put 18 on Columbia. And then you would mark where you're going to begin your top of descent. 